Hello, so today we're going to be looking at a quick primer for preparing models for texturing in Quixel Mixer. Now I've imported the model here inside of Blender, which is the tool of my choice. Um, just a quick note, I'm going to assume that you already have a basic understanding of your digital content creation tool or 3D application, whatever you want to call it. Um, and if you need help with that, then, you know, find the appropriate resources online. I should hopefully, if I don't already, have a primer for Blender 2.8 that discusses all the basic functions and all that. So again, find those tools if you need them. Um, this is going to assume you already know what you're doing inside your DC. So here I've imported this model. It seems like it's a little too large, so I'm just going to scale it down. Um, obviously, if you need it at a certain scale that is that large, then, you know, change your your application settings to reflect that and you change your clip, camera clipping and all that and your grid size and everything and you should be good to go on that. Um, for my sake, I'm just going to rotate this and place it and then apply those transformations so that way I can work on it easily within the viewport that I've configured for my usual work. All right, so we have this thing that we've imported. Um, I received this from somebody else, so I'm not familiar with this model. And it seems like they've assigned four materials to it. I'm just gonna rename these materials really quickly just to you know, make things simple for myself. Make sure that they're uh, listed the way I expect them to be. Oops. This will be three. Yeah. All right, so we've got our four materials. I assume that these are going to be the four materials that we want for a color ID group. Um, and so, yeah, the way that we set up our color ID group is we want to have one unified object, which we do have here. Uh, but the difference is going to be that um, we need to have either vertex group set or material group set so that we can kind of determine for ourselves the way that we want to um, kind of make sure that the mixer has an idea for where we want certain materials to land on this object. So the alternative would be to have separate objects and then to work on each of these objects individually because currently mixer doesn't have the ability to uh, unfortunately doesn't have the ability to import objects with group settings yet as far as i know um, and so it only handles one 3d model at a time and it doesn't really regard the groups or the vertex groups that are saved within that object as far as i understand it hopefully that's something that will be added in the future because it's something that uh, was that you could make use of in the quixel suite that was uh, around before Quixel Mixer. And I do believe that it's a function within Substance Painter, which is very useful. You can switch through the various groups that are in the 3D model, and you can start to assign colors and materials to those individual groups within the unified model. So um, in our case, we simply have to have a unified model and bake a color ID map in order to assign those materials, or like I said, work on the object separately. So. Let's say, for example, this cube that I've added, I want this to be some sort of shiny gold thing, and this background is going to be a rocky, dirty color. Um, you know, I could I could lay these out on their own UV maps, and I could, you know, texture them in Mixer separately, and then I could bring them back into Blender and assign the materials and textures back to them and simply have them in my scene as separate objects. That's certainly one way that you could do this. It's a little more tedious because you have to manage more objects, and you have to make sure that they come in the same location and all that, which is not too difficult to do. Um, but that's certainly is one way. So I'm going to do it the unified model way where we have one model that has one UV layout and has one material ID, and then I can begin to assign materials according to that ID. So first things first, um, let's take a look at this geometry because I'm not familiar with it. I have no idea who created it and for what purpose. So I'm just going to begin to optimize this in the way that I would start to work on it. So I can see that there are some different, I'm assuming these are UV islands here, and they're not laid out in a very useful way. So the way that I would do this personally is I would make vertex groups, and then I would assign materials to those vertex groups. And the reason I like making vertex groups first is because if I ever need to change anything or just access a, as a part of that model, then I can actually go back and select that vertex group. Now, alternatively, you could forego using vertex groups and you could use UV islands and then you could select them by the island. But in this case, you can see that my UV islands here are really broken and fragmented. And if we look at the UV layout, you can see that it's kind of a mess. Um, so another thing that's worth noting here is that when we work with a uh, Quixel mixer, we wanna make sure that we're staying within the zero to one space of our UV layout. 
which is this box right here. And you can see that this thing goes over that. So what the, what's gonna happen is when we have a material on here, a texture on here, it's going to tile across this. And um, the, the, the other issue that's going to happen that's more specific to Mixer is that Mixer doesn't respect anything outside of the zero to one space and it causes stretching for any um, UV shells or islands that fall outside of that zero to one space. I've had some experience with that um, before. And so you need to take consideration as to, you know, making sure that your mesh is properly mapped out. So I'm just gonna hit U and say unwrap and now we can see that all of our UV shells are correctly uh, placed within the zero to one space. So now what I'm gonna do is to kind of optimize this, I'm gonna select this outer portion here and I just hit L to select everything that's linked on this back part and I'm just gonna separate it off into its own separate object. Um, also, I apologize if you hear the little bird in the background. He's very excited when he hears me speak and he wants attention. So um, if you hear him uh, squeaking over there, that's just a little bird, don't mind him. So now that I have these um, islands separated off into their own groups, I can start to unify them. So um, I'm gonna go into vertex mode and I'll just switch back out to layout so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit uh, merge vertices by distance. And the value that I like to work with at this scale is 001, so 0 0.001. And you can see that we've removed about 2000 plus vertices here. And everything got kind of squishy and mushy because we have uh, shade smooth turned on. Um, I guess this model was smooth, whoever sent it to me. And now one thing I do happen to know about this model is if I try to lay this out, I can see that there's some weird geometric artifacts going on here. So I did I did peek at this ahead of time just to give you a fair warning uh, so I could set up the video and not waste your time. So let's see here. Uh, we have these weird little geometric artifacts here. So we need to get rid of these. I don't really know what's causing these. So let me take a look. And if I turn on this uh, UV sync selection, I can actually find them. Let's select this one. And if I hit the period key in the 3D window, there it is. So what I think is happening here is there are extra faces that are kind of overlapping things that don't need to be there. So I believe that there's a big face right here. If I take this and move it, you can see it's kind of doing some weird stuff. I'll just delete that. And then I'll re-merge everything here. So, Merge vertices by distance. Okay, it didn't seem like anything was out of place other than that one face that was just kind of duplicated above. Not sure how that happened. Whoever created this model or was working on this model maybe had a little bit of difficulty managing this geo, um, which can happen. No, no problem. And then it seems like we have a similar scenario going on here, and I can see that the normals here are kind of giving that away. So if I go back and I check my normal direction again, it seems like they're all proper but you can see that we're getting two normals pointing this way so it seems like there are again overlapping faces so i'm just gonna select this island here which uh on a face mode select that island and that's not the one i want i want this one over here let's turn off this uv sync select the whole thing and i want this part and this part and hmm, it's giving me a little bit of trouble so let's try to manually select it so it seems like this is the one that's over the top of the yep over the top here so i'm just going to delete those faces and you can see there it looks more proper and then i'm going to do this again and check out which ones these are oh hold on need to turn on my sync uv again i keep forgetting to turn that off let's find out okay here we are with another set of ver uh, faces that are on top and i think it's just this vertex here so i'm just going to delete that one and you'll see that that island disappears so yep that's about what i expected that back in place let's just do another um pass over with merging just to make sure we didn't miss anything and, and be careful with your merge distances of course because you don't want to merge things unduly uh, but because we've isolated everything here we have what we expect which are these four islands so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to recombine these two objects so selecting this one and this one hit Control j make them one object again so you see there's only one object and i can get rid of this zero zero one here and now what I can do is I can select the whole thing now that it's one object and I can hit you and say unwrap and you can see it unwraps everything according to these islands. Now this is not a very efficient UV layout and I'm just going to say that right now um, because we're not using all the space even if I pack this which it does almost instantaneously um, you can see that this one shell which is the background part is using up a ton of space. So ideally you would break this up into separate islands and make sure that you optimize your space to get the most uh, out of your texture density or you could 
like you could like i said before you could separate these out into two separate objects and then work on that second group individually um, as a separate you know obj and then merge them together later on um, and just have two separate materials that are applied to different parts of the mesh that's, that's certainly a valid option there um, but uh, for the sake of you know just having this example i'm just going to leave them as they are um, even though the UV layout is not very well optimized, and that will probably give us some texture resolution issues if we were to really try to push the boundaries of this thing. But for the sake of, uh, of an example, I think this is fine. Um, one other thing that I should note is I'm not going to re-merge the vertices from the first group onto the second one, so that means we're going to have double vertices. But just to show you what I mean there, if I select here, you can see that we actually have two verts selected instead of just the one. Um, so you know, again, keep that in mind. What I could do is I could merge this whole thing and then select the groups that I want and then assign a vertex group. I'm just gonna forgo that right now because I don't wanna waste time. So I'll select this one. And again, I wanna create a vertex group. So we'll just call this mat one. And then I need to hit assign. Because if you don't hit assign, if you just create it and name it, that's not gonna keep track of all these vertices. Make sure you hit assign. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna create a new one. All call it mat2 and hit assign same thing here mat3 assign and then here we're going to do mat4 and assign and then the background we're going to do another one so we're going to have to create a fifth material mat5 and hit assign so the nice thing about these vertex groups is i can simply hit select and then it'll select the group that i want so that way i always have access to uh, whatever group you know I need there we go so now what I can do is I can select mat one and then I can go into my material settings and I can hit assign on here and then I can do the same thing here I can select mat two go into my material settings find it there mat three here and then mat four like that on that and then like I said we're gonna need to create a fifth material so let's call this one material at five and then we're gonna do the same thing of course this make sure that you don't have anything previously selected so I'm always hitting a to deselect and then hitting select to you know select the proper one if I if I hit select on one and then hit select on another it's just gonna keep adding to the group so just be aware of that so select and then at five assign all right so now in order to create a a material ID we need to have separate colors so for mat one it doesn't really matter what color I use as long as it's a different color so if I go into my material preview you can see that's yellow and then this can be blue and this one can be turquoise and this one can be I don't know what red uh, pinkish red and then this one can be totally separate color from all the rest so oh, and it there we go so some sort of salmon color there it doesn't really matter <coughs> excuse me as long as they're not the same color and they have a clear difference between them it should work fine um, so now that we have all of this assigned and it's all on one material I'm gonna create a duplicate of this right and now I'm gonna merge everything together in this duplicate so I'll select everything and I'm just gonna say merge vertices by distance and you can see it's gonna remove those vertices and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand this just a tiny bit. So if I hit Alt S, hold down the shift key, I just expand it just the slightest amount. And then I'm just gonna remove all these materials and create a new material. I'm gonna call this one color ID. Now, it doesn't really matter what you call the material because we're gonna bake this down onto a texture. Um, and just to note that the that little tiny shift that I did to expand all of those faces with Alt S, I do it that way because it's easier for the baking process, but if you don't want to do that, um, then you may need to shrink the underlying geometry because ultimately we're going to use this one that we expanded um, as the final model that will go into Mixer. Um, so just be aware of you know where you're placing your models and what kind of sizes you need. Obviously don't go overboard with that. I just did a very tiny amount just to get this, not have any Z fighting or clipping with the previous model. Just be aware of that. Okay, so now that I have this color ID, I'm gonna go into my shading setup and I'm just gonna close down this window up here because I don't need it. And let's see, 
I want to change this to better, which it is. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new texture, image texture. So I'm going to hit Shift A, search, type image texture, and I'm going to hit New. And let's say we want to work at 2048. Work at whatever size you need. And I'm going to call this T underscore color ID. Now I always pre prefix everything with T underscore because it's a texture, just so that I can keep things clear in my head. Um, obviously use whatever naming convention is best for you. So I'll just call that color ID. I don't need any alpha for this and I'll leave the color as black. I don't need a 32 bit. So we'll just leave it blank and say, okay. So I'm gonna have this selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the bottom mesh, the first mesh, and then I'm gonna shift select the top mesh. Um, and that's basically okay, like this. So it'll bake from the active mesh to the selected mesh, I believe. Let me double check that in a second. So this is the duplicate that has the color ID and this is the one with all the materials. So we wanna take all of these colors and bake them onto this duplicate. That's essentially what we're doing here. So you can obviously do this in other applications, say, you know, Marmoset or uh, I'm not sure if X normal will do it. It'll probably do it according to vertex colors. So you could probably use X normal or hand plane baker or whatever you're familiar with. Um, or Nald or any other baking program that you're familiar with. But here we're just gonna sit inside of Blender because you know, it's easy for in Blender. I'm gonna switch my render engine to cycles and I'm gonna switch this to GPU just so it's a little bit faster. And then I'm gonna come down here to bake and I'm just gonna say, um, not combined, I want the diffuse color. So we're gonna go to diffuse and we only want the color. We don't want any lighting information. So I'm gonna turn that off and we want from selected to active. So we wanna make sure that we're going from the selected mode to the active one. So the active one is gonna be this one then. So I had it backwards, I guess. So we want this one and then shift click the dirt cliff. Now the weird thing about Blender is when you click something in the uh, outliner and then you shift click something, whatever you clicked first stays active, but in the viewport it's a little different. So whatever you click here and then you click later, uh, the last one becomes active in the 3D window. It's a little confusing, I know, just bear with it. So make sure that this is the active object that we're going to bake from the selected to the active. All right, so now that we have that set up, we have a margin set up and clear image, that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this, this empty image texture that we created. And with all that selected, we're just gonna hit bake and we're gonna let it go. I'm gonna switch this over here to my color ID. So that way I can examine the color ID after it's done baking. Open that up a little bit. And you can see here at the bottom, we have a progress bar and it should go relatively quickly because all we're doing is baking colored data onto a 2K map anyways. All right, now that that's done, you can see here that we did get our bake. There is a little bit of an issue here because there, um, I think there's a little bit of padding from the bake. And so we're getting a little bit of bleed here. And this is something that we might need to fix inside of Photoshop because what's gonna happen is whatever material we, or whatever texture we uh, plan to assign here is going to bleed over onto this. Now, the other thing that I could do, however, is I could probably assign this a little bit better. So what I could do here is take this entire thing and go back into our UV editing layout. And you can see here, yep, it's because of the bleed. So what I'll do is I'll just select this island and I'll move it somewhere else. And like I said before, you could, um, kind of resize these islands to be however you want them. I'm not gonna bother with that just to keep texel density uniform. Um, you know, again, it's like you kind of have to choose between uniform texel density and optimization of the UV space based on however you've laid out your model. In this case, I'm just trying to show this example. So I'm just gonna fix that up really quickly. And I'm leaving in all these little quirky mistakes because I think it's important for people to see that sort of thing. I know it might be annoying for the more veteran users, but I think it's good for people who've never done this before or who are trying this for the first time. So I'm gonna hit bake again, making sure that I've selected this because we're gonna overwrite it. And again, I've selected the, the bottom one and then that's selected and then made this the top one, the one we're baking onto the active one. And I'm just gonna hit bake again and see what happens. So this should go, and hopefully this time we won't have that bleeding issue. We'll see. Okay, and there we go. Now we still have some bleeding and that's unfortunate. I'm not sure why that, it's probably because 
um, when I scaled that top one up, there might be like some really bad overlapping like with this, I'm pretty sure it's this piece right here. Um, so again, this is probably something I can go and fix inside of Photoshop, or I could probably even do it just right here inside of Blender. Let's go to Texture Paint, and let's do it like this. I'm going to select the color. So where's my color picker? Just grab, oops, there we go. And just paint that over right there. And then with this one, so yeah, you can do this all right inside of Blender, which is pretty great, I think. Like this one and we'll just paint that over make sure this whole island is the correct color and the nice thing is we we space these all out so now i can literally just come in here and make whatever mess i want of it as long as my um color id map is not overlapping with anything else and i don't any longer have to worry about having to uh, accidentally having painted over things that i didn't want to paint over so i'm just checking this up close real quickly to make sure that my Yep, see there's a little bit of bleed over here from some of those other vertices. So again, we're just gonna go in here and this just really quickly. See what else? Here. I don't think there was anything there, but I'm just hit it up just to be safe. Looks all fine. And this looks good. Yeah, so the the way that your um, geometry is laid out, obviously watch out for any non-manifold edges. This UV layout probably has a bit of stretching to it because of the compression of these various uh, configurations of vertices and whatnot. And that's, you know, that's not ideal. Again, if you're going to work on something like this, make sure that you're um, keeping that in mind. So let's go to our... All right, so now that we have that set up, um, yeah, just be aware of what you're doing with your geometry. We can actually connect this now. And then if I go back into my layout, you can see, there we go. We've got this separate model now. So let's take this previous dirt cliff and I can push it back. And you'll see this is the one that has the individual materials applied to it here. And this literally just has our color ID. So I'm going to I'm gonna either delete or hide this previous one. I don't need it anymore. And this is the one that we have baked onto. So I'll call that B. And now I'm going to go back into my shading setup. And one really important thing that we need to do is we need to save this image. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. If we close Blender and forget to save this, it's very bad. So. You can see here that if I click this little hamburger menu here, you'll see it says image, it's got an asterisk, that means we need to save this. So I'm just gonna save this, I'll throw it on my desktop. I'll call this E underscore color ID, and you can save it with whatever compression you want, whatever color depth and whatever uh, image um, format. Um, PNG is ideal for me, so I'm just gonna save that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my layout, I'm gonna select this model, make sure it's only this one, and then I'm just gonna save this. So I'm gonna export this as an OBJ, and I'm gonna throw this on my desktop, and I'm just gonna call this uh, Dirt Cliff, because that's what it was originally called. And I'm gonna say selection only, and I always like to turn on the preservation or order of the order of my vertex groups. And I'm just gonna export that, and now we'll open up Mixer and import everything into Mixer. So I know that was a little bit longer than I expected, but that's more or less the rundown of some optimizations you may have to go through. Um, obviously, if you create your model from scratch, you're gonna have better control over it. Um, I'm just gonna call this T underscore dirt clip. Just to be consistent, we're gonna use a 2K map. Say okay. And now what we need to do is we need to import. So let me maximize that first. So let's go to our setup. And instead of a plane, we want a custom mesh. And then again, I'm gonna go to my desktop. Find it, there it is, dirt clip. And there we go, we've got our model imported. And uh, let's see, we need our layers, our material ID or our color ID, we're gonna load that, the color ID. And now you can see we have all of these different material IDs that we can now assign things to. So if I go into this uh, library here, let's look for some, I don't know, some plaster maybe or some dirt, a rock, where's rock, there it is. All right, so I have all these rock layers. So let's get this layer on top. And let's assign that to a certain part of our material ID. So we have this ID button here. And now we can select whatever part of the model that material is going to go to. Which is pretty dandy. So now if I want to duplicate this and, I don't know, maybe change the color to be something different. Right? Now I can come over here and say, well, I want to assign that there. And let's duplicate it again and assign a different color. Maybe uh, more of a goldish color and make this more metallic. So I can come down to my metalness and just crank that up, turn my roughness down. Maybe that's more of a gold. Maybe someone needs to come in and mine that gold. 
Um, I can turn that into, I don't know, this area over here. Perhaps this area over here. And then, uh, here, let's assign this one to the entire background layer. And then let's make an additional one, just for the heck of it. And that. Or we can assign it to two. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea at this point, I think. Right? This two different. Something purple. I don't know. There you go. And then the last one. There is a way to visualize the color ID. I haven't memorized all of the um, hotkeys yet, unfortunately. So it's one of those things where I believe it might be one of the numbers. Let's see. There we go. It's the 8 key. So if you want to visualize your color ID map, just hit the 8 key and you'll know exactly what color is assigned to what part of the mesh or just memorize it, whatever is easier. Um, and then hit one to go back. And then there you go. You can see that we have all these different colors assigned to different parts of our model. And then you can export them and then it'll all go as, you know, a set of maps that are all unified and you just map it onto your model in Blender uh, however you want. So that's more or less how you would set up your material ID and kind of bake things down in order to get them into Quixel Mixer and kind of uh, be able to assign those various textures onto your model inside of Mixer. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I hope you have a good day. Stay safe out there. Take care.